Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Coming at you with 2022 Panini Donruss Elite Football. Four box, random team break number two. One spot gets you two teams. It's a pretty good price point right there. And the original 16 spots, like we usually do it, the original 16 spots, those names are gonna be on that big promo list. Now, could possibly be done tonight, but the deadline is tomorrow night. All right, big thanks to this group right here. Thanks to Robert, William, Matt, and the X-Line. Let's uh, double up, uh, uh, like Sir Mix-a-Lot. And all 32 teams are in. Let's roll it and randomize names and teams three and a four, seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. All right, got Josh down to Josh. Three and a four, seven times for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seventh and final time. No, it's all, it's all good, Josh. It is all good. I appreciate you getting into the action. Yeah, life, life a little busier these days. I get it, it happens. All right, now Josh, you've got all this. This might be easier just to do it this way. So the X line has all the spots, the X, uh, except for Matt. You've got the Panthers and Giants, Robert with the Texans, William with the Dolphins, Robert with the Colts and the Bills, William with the Commanders, and Robert with the Rams. The X line, you got the rest. Let's actually sort this alphabetically by team. Now, actually, I don't know if any of these other guys are here, the X line. Is any specific trade you feel like making or throwing out there, or should we just roll? And I, and I think Jason opened up the case for the random teams. So there's these loose boxes in my cabinet. I just grabbed four loose boxes right here. So we're just going to roll with that. Here. Nathaniel Hackett, only rookie head coach to lose debut this week one. I mean, come on. Come on, NFL Network. I'm kind of piling it on. I feel like they usually don't. All right, I don't think there's going to be any trades. Trade window going once. Trade window going twice. TWC trade window closed. Although, I mean, he did have timeouts, too. The Broncos coach did have timeouts. I thought maybe you can even get Russell Wilson go up there, do some hard counts, try to get a uh, try to get a neutral zone infraction. All right, so trade window closed. Here's the final printout, hot off the presses. Right? At, at least you go up to the line, maybe you have Russell Wilson. I mean, I'm a Raiders fan, so I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I don't mind seeing the Broncos lose, but I'm also a fan of football as well, and you just, you just want some smart football to be played. You know, and you're just... But it's a little, it's a little tough. Well, week one, ladies and gentlemen, is in the books. Um, you know, the NFL is back. I'm happy about it. I love to see it. Uh, Bills, Rams started things off. That was a, that was a, was it a fun matchup? A little sloppy on the Rams part, but man, they, they even with 
some of uh, the interceptions or the turnovers that the Bills had. I mean, they still crew. That defense looked great. They still put up 31 points. So that's going to be a dangerous team. What are some other? What were some of the other games that jumped out at you, ladies and gentlemen? I wish it didn't rain in Chicago because I would have loved to see, you know, just kind of more, just better conditions to see Trey Lance and Justin Fields, a couple young quarterbacks, duke it out. But the rain, I think, really kind of threw things off for both teams. Um, good win for the Bears, though. Uh, Steelers Bengals finish was wild, and if if. Their long snapper didn't, Bengals long snapper didn't go out, they'd be fine, but uh, what else? A.J. Brown looked good for the Eagles, you know. Jalen Waddell had a nice 42-yard touchdown from Tua in the Dolphins winning effort. Lamar Jackson, how do we like Lamar Jackson betting on himself? It's not like, I mean, it's not like Aaron Judge betting on himself. You know, he doesn't have 200-pound defensive linemen running after him. You know, he's relatively safe in a batter's box. But, hey, big gamble by Lamar Jackson. I like it. It's spicy. I like that. I like that level of spice. Um, Brown's ruining, uh, ruining Baker Mayfield's potential revenge game. In Carolina, there's a tie. Colts and Texans. Giants win on the road. It's kind of what they do for some odd reason. If they're road dogs, they seem to be winning. That's that's a that's a trend. Look it up. Uh, Packers not looking good. Chiefs looking real good. Raiders didn't look good, but they were still in it to the last few minutes against the Chargers. There's boy Mayf to 999. And uh, kind of a clunker. Sunday night was a little bit of a clunker. Buccaneers winning 19-3. Poor, poor Dak Prescott. And then, uh, and then Seahawks doing the unexpected on Monday night, beating the Broncos by a point. It's Gabriel Davis to 399. When you're at damage, choose safe flight. We can come to you and replace your windshield. Wow, thank you. And we've got a turn of the century autograph, Quay Walker, 34 out of 49 for the Packers, the X line with the Packers. Josh, how old is uh, how old is your son? Is he between the ages of is he between the ages of seven and thirteen? It's JJ Watt to 99. Ah, oh, it's just outside of that. Too old now. And we got a lot of local kids that come in. We'll give those away to them. There's Trayvon Walker to 399. Didn't didn't we send you a stack of those cards one year? Twenty-four, Clyde Edwards Elaire. Yeah, that's right. We did, didn't we? I, I remember we tried that one year. Oliver, how are how old are your kids? I right, got another Packer elite coverage, Charles Woodson. Is he? Ooh! All right, Oliver. Did 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 you? Sometimes you can you can plug those codes and they'll get like a panini hat or something random like that. Did you even get anything like that? All right, Oliver. I got you. Two eleven-year-olds. That's perfect. Nada, okay. Because I remember, I remember uh, we sent those out to somebody else. And they were like, yeah, we, we punch in the numbers, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Oliver, let, let, me, let me know when you, uh, next time you're going to pop in. I'll give you a stack of those. There's Quay Walker to 9.99. That's easy. We don't have to, we don't have to ship it. 
shipping team will be happy. The shipping budgeting team will be happy mostly. There's Kate Otten to 9.99. And we got Sam Howell, Pen Pals, on card autograph. All right, nice. I'll be here. And that'll be for William and the Commanders. Kate Otten, 12 out of 12. So, and if I remember correctly, Oliver, to 349, there's Trevor Lawrence. If I remember correctly, there's like multiple layers to that Kid Reporter contest. So, you got to make sure at least one of you, uh, one of the two, or both, you have to decide. Uh, if they're willing to to be on uh, on camera, is that going to be a problem? Or if they're if they're into it, I'll definitely I'll definitely give you those. I I want to say, first of all, you got to try to win an an entry into it, so they don't have a problem. Okay, for a while they'll be perfect then. Um, you just have to decide which one. Um, but I think if you read the small print or if you go to the actual Kid Reporter page that they have on there, uh, I want to say that first you have to just be selected to be an entrant. And then you send in a video. Um, oh, yeah, maybe maybe your, your, Josh, your son might not be as good on camera. Yeah, at that age, it's a little weird. 7 through 13, either you have a precocious kid that'll just be like, whatever, I'll be on camera. Or that could be terrifying. Like, that. so I don't know. It could go either way. But anyway, they don't have a problem with it. I think there's an audition process after, or you just send in a tape. I think it's like, I think they. I think I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure that's like you do like a fake interview or something like that. So I think there's a process. I think there'll be like 100 entries will get into it, and then those 100 kids or whatever will then send in, you know, like a five, 10 minute video or something like that, or maybe just upload to YouTube or something, and, and do a quick little video of them asking some questions or what questions they would ask in the Super Bowl if you were a kid reporter, make a quick little introduction, and then you send that in, and then, um, and then I think Panini then selects from there. <laughs> you know what? I was just going to say, you know, Panini might be more inclined to, to have a, uh, a football-loving girl ask the question. I think they've been boys, like, for the last handful of years. So they might want to mix it up. So who knows? Maybe there'll be an edge there. And a Mac Jones, Back to the Future autograph. We're going back to the future. Roads, where we're going, we won't need roads. Uh, 95 out of 99. And I can do the little uh, Back to the Future license plate spin here. And that'll be for the X-Line and the Patriots. Hurt his back. X-rays negative, Josh. This card's value will be just fine. There's Keontae Ingram to 399. Lamar Jackson to 75. Now Oliver, we're gonna have to somehow if you're if, if one of your kids gets into this kid reporter contest, we're gonna have to somehow make sure that you'll uh, we'll get get you to where I'm sure they'll they'll make you cover it up as soon as you do but get get like get you into some or your kid into some Jaspi gear Romeo Dobbs pen pals on card autograph will he emerge as the key receiver for the Packers this goes to the X line yeah 
Yeah, Mac Jones should be just fine. Might miss a game or two, but he's averted disaster. There's Derrick Henry to 399. Of course, back issues are always, always scary, too. I don't know why I put the Kid Reporter's card to my right. It's not a good card throwing. My right hand is where I go there. We've got the broadcast. I didn't know they had broadcasters in here. Tony Romo. I guess he used to be a cowboy. 290 out of 299. There's probably a whole generation of kids who only know Tony Romo as a broadcaster. There's Saquon Barkley looking good so far, so good for Saquon. Good to see him doing well. It's also hashtag good for the hobby. I think good for the NFL. He's a good uh, he's a good personality. People like seeing seeing him. It's good for advertising and a lot of commercials. There's Samori Toure to 999 for the Packers. George Kittle. Kittle and Bits to 399. Debo to 75, full throttle. It's the only way he knows how. Goes to the Niners, the X line with the Niners. Got a Joe Mixon, I guess Pulsar, who's Pulsar card to 49. I thought the dots are a little more condensed in Pulsar, but still nice. Cincinnati, Josh, we're on Cincinnati. All right, a couple more boxes to go. Um, I know, I know it's good to stay in the moment, but it's hard not, just so excited about the NFL, it's hard not to look ahead. What games are we looking forward to next week? Thursday night, Chargers at Chiefs. Now the Chiefs had a big win. 23 point win or something like that? So I have a little trend, an interesting trend to note on something like that. These are just part of my little trend betting notes that I often have, or even not for betting, just, 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 for, just for funsies. In the last, uh, the last, what, 16, 17 times that this has occurred, a week one winner by 27 plus points. Now I know the Chiefs only won by 23, but a week one winner by 27 or more points. Week two against the spread, those teams have been two, 14, and one. So if a team in week one beat a team by 27 points or more, in week two, that team against the spread went two and 14. Just a trend, right? Past performance does not in, does not mean it'll be the same future result, but interesting to note. The Chiefs won by 23 points. That might, might be the difference, but 23 points. I don't have the numbers on that. And uh, but the, and they're playing on Thursday night, so that might be different. I don't know how many of these games. For most of these games on Sunday, I don't know. The short week affect things. For whatever it's worth, the Chiefs are uh, minus three and a half favorites, home favorites against the uh, division rival Chargers. So there you go. Fun fact.
Do I have any Chiefs fun facts? This might not apply until later later on in the season, but I guess for a time, and Vegas might have adjusted to it by this season, but teams over 500 against the spread, Chiefs are only 2-6 and six against teams over 500 against the spread, ATS. Moxie, Brandon I, Niners, the X-Line. I need to look up, uh, hey, speaking of the Chiefs, there's Mahomes. He's looking fine, 399. The rumors of de his demise post Tyreek Hill greatly exaggerated. It's Ty Chandler to 399. The X-Line getting all these teams except for, if you're rooting for the underdogs here, we got, we're looking for Bills, Texans, Colts, Rams, Dolphins, Giants, uh, and Commanders. So. Most of these are going to the X line. The Mahomes going to the X line. Full throttle, T. Higgins at 349. And Buccaneers etched in time signatures, Rondé Barber, Tiki's brother. That's for uh, the X line and the Buccaneers. Jerome Ford to 99 for the Browns. TJ Watt pectoral injury, TBD on how long he's going to be out. If it's serious, might be the entire season. And if not, it might just be like a month or so. There's Jonathan Ogden. To 149, etched in time for the Ravens, the X line. Yeah, you shouldn't have to, actually. You already did that. I'd feel bad. No, do we live to live to break another day? That's what I say. Cooper Cup going to Robert Elias and the Rams. A little full throttle into right there to 349. You've helped us out enough tonight, the X line. At 399, Brian Osmoa. And behind Kyler Murray, nice Garrett Wilson. Bit of a rough start for the Jets this year. But you think, did Garrett Wilson do it? I think we looked this up a little, the other night. But Garrett Wilson, four catches, 52 yards. So not bad. Getting his feet wet in the league. This goes to the X-Line and the Jets. And who do the Jets have this week? They are, and I don't know if they're going to have Zach Wilson yet, but they are at Browns. Jets at Browns, Cleveland minus six, but the total is only 40, 40 and a half. Which some suggest, rule of thumb, is you take the almost a touchdown that the Jets are getting in a low total game. Uh, but look, I mean, that's just on a surface level. That just kind of jumps out at you. But you gotta got to dig into the, to the additional data. I don't know. When's Zach Wilson coming back? Maybe week two. Maybe plus six is a number you need to get on, on now before uh, Jordan Davis, before that, that number changes if Zach Wilson is back. Stafford, oh, seven out of 99. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? What movie is that from? Got uh, Hassan Haskins to 9.99. Russell Wilson, Daniel Jones. All right, fourth and final box. This is Elite 
four box break, random team break number two. The original 16 spots here have already been added to the master list for the uh, spots sold promo we've got going on right now. Details on jazbeescasebreaks.com. All right, what other games look exciting next week, boys and girls? Week two, I'm already looking at it. Yeah, Chargers Chiefs, that's an island game. That's a Thursday night game. That's the first game on Prime Video. How am I going to watch that? My TV doesn't have Prime. I guess my iPad does, though. I guess I'll have to play that on my iPad. Al Michaels and Kirk Herbstreet, I think, are the team. That's kind of a weird team. Hmm. So we'll see that. That should be pretty fun. Um, Casey's minus three and a half. Big total, too. 54 and a half is the over-under. Jets, Browns, meh. <laughs> Unless Zach Wilson's playing. Commanders, Lions. <laughs> Panthers, Giants, Patriots, Steelers. Oliver, that's that's a that's another good matchup for your Steelers. Two weeks in a row. Colts, Jaguars, mm. Falcons, Rams. I'll be forced to watch that because that's the local game here. Uh, Seahawks Niners, a little division rivalry game. That looks like that could be some fun, especially with the game the Seahawks had. And knowing that the Niners need to bounce back from their uh, from their their loss in Chicago. Ooh, this is interesting too. Niners are a big favorite at minus eight and a half. Total is only 42 and a half. You might almost want to take the Seahawks at plus eight and a half with that low total. At least that's a game that I'd look into a little bit more with that. Man, my, uh, my aunt and uncle, my uncle and my dad's brother spent a lot of time in Texas. Um, so he actually grew up, uh, he actually was an Oilers fan before the Houston Oilers broke his heart, turned into a Dallas Cowboys fan. So um, I know the Cowboys get a lot of hate, but I actually don't mind the Cowboys as much as some people do. Um, I feel bad for Dak Prescott. I would have loved to see a Joe Burrow-Dak Prescott matchup, but now, not so much. It's not as fun. So that, that's kind of a bummer. There's Derek Stingley Jr. for the Texans. That's the next game, actually. Texans at Broncos. I guess maybe just to kind of scout Davis Mills. Oh, here's an autograph. It's Brees Hall. Nice. You got the Garrett Wilson, Josh. And now the running back, Brees Hall. Cardinals Raiders. I mean, bo both, both off some disappointing games. I think maybe the Raiders in their loss looked better than the Cardinals in their loss. I don't know. But both teams need to clean things up. But I don't know, still kind of a meh matchup. This is kind of fun. The Sunday night football game is interesting because it's Bears at Packers. There's poor Dak Prescott. Be out for six to eight weeks, about, about half the season. And that's just recovery. And then think about just knocking off the rust after that. But Bears at Packers is interesting because Packers... Uh, a sort of an embarrassing loss to the to another division rival, the, the Vikings. There's Lamar Jackson. And um, maybe the Bears feeling a little confident with their W over the Niners. But man, Packers are minus 10. Total is only 43. Is that, is that a Bears plus 10 right there? You know they'll be geared up to face a rival and kind of kick them while they're down. There's Michael Gallup for the boys. I think he'll be back in action too. Dallas, that'll be for the X-Line. Now there are some, some, some legendary stats for Green Bay, right? No, I don't know if I... No, I have Aaron Rodgers' December stats and I have Aaron Rodgers versus teams on a three-game losing streak. I don't know. Aaron Rodgers after a loss, though. Aaron Rodgers after a loss, I feel like, is a pretty strong number. 
but yeah, initially, I mean, obviously, we got to spend a bit of the week, see how the line moves. But if you are, sometimes there, there, there is a strategy to kind of getting the best of the number early on, especially if you think it's going to move the other way. If the public is on the bears, maybe that slips down to like plus eight, plus seven and a half. But plus 10 right now, if you feel like moving on that a little early, that might be an interesting one to do. Yeah, Oliver, we love to track those picks. I'm actually starting to use, there's Justin Fields, 349 for the Bears, that'll be for Josh. I'm starting to use, uh, ooh, what is this? Ooh, nice LT, LaDainian Thomas and that LT. 43 out of 50, on-card auto. That's the Josh X line with the Josh X line with the San Diego Chargers, Los Angeles Chargers, LT. 43 out of 50. Uh, he's got a great A Football Life episode based off the book Tomlinson Hill, which I wanted to, which is on my reading list. There's Montreal, Washington. And he's got one of the one of the best, uh, at least in recent memory, one of my favorite Hall of Fame speeches. All right, there's a uh, Keontae Ingram to 9.99, Micah Parsons, and Joe Mixon. That is that, my friends. Josh, I appreciate you getting so many spots in this. Appreciate everybody else getting spots in this as well. Thank you very much. Um, we'll load up the final four boxes. That won't be part of the promo, but we should we should kill off those final four boxes sometime this week. All right, thanks, everybody. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.